Today I got a brand new Acer Predator Helios 300. I'm going to do some upgrading and cloning on it and I'll show you how I do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got a brand new Acer Predator Helios 300 gaming laptop. Customer just bought it from us, uh, but before they take it home, they want me to do some upgrading. Um, I'm going to give you a quick list of the specs, how it came from the factory, but on these 300s, it, th on this one anyway, it comes with the Intel 10th generation, Intel Core i7, 10750H, 6 core processor. It has 16 gigs of DDR4 2933 memory, uh, 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, uh, it has a full 1080p HD display at 144 megahertz and 3 milliseconds, really nice display. Um, it's got the killer Wi-Fi and the killer Ethernet in it. The killer Wi-Fi is the AX1650i and it's got the E2600 killer Ethernet. And now this has a four zone RGB keyboard. You can control the, the lighting layout on it with the Predator Sense software. It's pretty cool. And it has a turbo button here for when you're gaming. You can crack that, uh, push that to pop on one of your overclock profiles if you prefer. A uh, quick overview here on the side, we have our mini display port, HDMI port, USB high speed A type, USB C type, high speed USB. Over on this side, we have our headphone jack or external speakers, two more high speed uh, USB 3.2 ports and here's our killer ethernet port right here. <clears throat> of course you got your webcam and all that fun stuff. Um, but this, this has the GeForce RTX 2060 graphics, pretty high-end graphics, uh, 6 gigabytes of DDR, GDDR5 dedicated VRAM. So what we're, like I said, what, what I'm going to upgrade it on is the actual SSD and the memory. I'm going to open up and show you how to do that. So before I do that though, instead of doing a clean install, I decided just to do a quick clone using the Samsung data migration because this is the drive that I'm going to install. It's brand new 970 EVO Plus, real good drives. I use them all the time, but it's a one terabyte. And the 512, I'm just going to take out. They want it, don't want me to put it back in because there is a second slot. They want to maybe upgrade later and add another one of these. But I am going to install also on top of that a brand new Crucial two and a half inch solid state SATA drive. There's a two and a half inch bay in here, and Acer was kind enough to send the mounting screws. The caddy's already inside the laptop. These are the screws to put it in the caddy. And of course, here's your SATA cable. These come in the box from Acer. And on the RAM, I'm going to double it to 32 gigs of DDR4 with, with the Kingston HyperX RAM, the 2933. And here's our SSD that we're going to put in there. But I am going to clone it using that software. So what I like to use is a USB adapter. This one here we use in the store all the time. I'll have a link down below where you can get one of these. They're really easy to use. It's actually a, a, um, an external enclosure. You can use it just to put a drive in if you want, like an external drive. They work great for this. So it plugs right in. There's no screws. It just pops in over that little rubber grommet right there. Holds it in place. And I'm going to plug it into a USB port. I'll stick it over on this side. Doesn't matter really which one you put it in. Now the cloning should actually go pretty quick because there's no, you know, games and customer data on here yet because it is brand new. So now we got our drive plugged in. I'm going to open up the data migration software here. And I have a link down below where you can download this right from Samsung's website. So basically we're just going to select our source drive, which is this one right here, the one that's in there right now, the 512. Then we're going to go down and choose our target drive, which right here is our 970 EVO Plus. Just click on it. This is the partition layout. This is what it is now. This is what it's going to look like when we're all done. So all you got to do is click the start button here and we're going to do a full clone. And hit start. And this is just telling you that, you know, once it's done, you got to install it and it's going to delete anything that's already on the drive. So we're going to hit OK. And we're going to wait for it to start here and then I'll pause for a minute. I'll come back and we'll open it up, install our new parts, and make it a little better. But these Predators are pretty nice. It's kind of mid-level mid of the Acer gaming laptops. They have the Helios 500, the Helios 700 series above this. And of course the Nitro 5s are a little below this. 
But with the RTX 2060 graphics and the additions we're doing to it, this thing should have no problem playing any game on the max settings. I'm just waiting for it to start here. It's at 0%. <clears throat> and these clones using this software generally take maybe five, six, seven minutes. Wait for it to hit one percent here, guys. Come on. All right, there we go. We got a clone started. You can see it's cranking right along here. So I'm going to let this get almost to the end, and then I'll come back and we'll get started on the upgrades. All right. All right, guys, you can see that it's just about done here, 98, 99%. It'll kind of hang here for a second at the 99%, but that's normal. This software is really quick in a case like this out of the box. Uh, we got just over three minutes into a full clone here. And the little time counter down there. Now you can choose a different solid state NVMe drive to put in a laptop like this. I like the Samsungs. I use Crucial Western Digital Black Edition SSDs. You got the C Seagate Barracuda drives. There's all kinds of choices out there. A Data has some good drives. The SX8200 Pro from, from uh, A Data is a really good drive. I use those. I always give the customer a choice and it really depends on their budget. Of course, you got the 970 Pro, which costs quite a bit more, but those are those are really fast. But these 970 Pluses are specs on those are pretty darn good. Always better than what the factory puts in these drives. Just waiting for it to give me the sign here that it's done. We're a little over four minutes. Um, this laptop has a four cell battery in it. It comes in, weighs about just a hair over five pounds, about 5.03 pounds. Here's the power brick for it. It's uh, pretty hefty. It's 230 watt power brick. Plugs into the back of the computer instead of on the side. So there's, there's our, we finished up. It's just telling us we're gonna shut down now because we're gonna install the new drive. So I'm gonna let it shut down. I'm gonna disconnect my drive. And hopefully we got a good clone. Like I said, guys, there's different types of adapters. I got all kinds of them here in the store, but this one, we, I got about four of these laying around. We use them all the time. Plus, we have a cloning station. In some cases, we just take it right out and do it on a separate computer. We do so many of these. So we're done with that. All right, so we're going to close it up. We're going to go inside. And the logo, the Predator logo here, lights up really nice too. Even in daylight, you can see it really good. When I'm all done, I'll show you that. It's pretty cool. Nice blue. So, as with any project like this, I always like to remind my viewers, make sure you're protected against ant, um, you know, static electricity. You don't want to be zapping something in there. When I get inside, the first thing I'll do is disconnect the battery. I'm going to remove all the, all the screws, obviously. Uh, but wear a wristband or or an anti-static mat or do both, just make sure you're protected from static electricity and don't touch anything you really don't have to touch. And always, always use good tools. Uh, in this case, for these screws, I'm just gonna use a number zero or a PH zero Phillips screwdriver. You want one with a good quality tip. You don't wanna go cheap on the screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and start removing all the screws here, guys, and put them on my mat over here. Sometimes the screws are different lengths you want to make sure you put the right screws back in the right holes. <clears throat> I believe all these are going to be the same length. I've done a few of these Predators. They're pretty much all the same inside, relatively close, whether it's an i5 or an i7 or, a, or whatever. In this case, we got in this case we got a 10th generation Core i7. I always lay the screws out over here in the order in which I take them out, just in case. You can see I got a good magnetic tip. These are a little tricky to get open, and I'll show you why in just a second. You got to be really careful. 
Use a good spudger tool. So we got all the screws out, we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do now, and my bench tops are all protected from static electricity as well as my floors. I treat them, we treat them all the time with static side. It's a product you can buy. And of course my carpet is all commercial grade anti-static carpet. So I always start on these in the back, because what you wanna watch out is oops, on the side where the, the, um, the top panel, it's, this is aluminum and you got plastic on the bottom. It kind of wraps around. You can see there's a seam here where the, the aluminum meets the plastic. You don't, you got to be careful getting in there and prying because you can bend this aluminum along the side around these ports. You got to be really careful you don't booger that up. Okay, so in the back here, there's a seam here where we can usually get my spudger in here. I'm going to poke and prod here, so bear with me guys. It's hard to get that in there sometimes. Just gotta find the sweet spot. Ah. There we go. See, I got my spudger started. See the seam starting to open up here? Just like that is a good thing. Then I'm going to reach over here and grab my other tool. And right here in the corner around the hinge area here, if you get in here, you just kind of gently, see how it's kind of coming up like that? I just don't want to put my spudger in here if I don't have to where that aluminum wraps around and meet the plastic here because like I said, you can booger that up pretty easy. I haven't done it, but one of my guys actually kind of, we were able to make it look pretty though. But I'm starting in the back here. And don't stick your tool in there too far because there's a lot of stuff in there. So you can see how I'm doing this. See this aluminum is just really thin along the edge here. You don't want to bend it. So, so I'm going to get in the front here. There now it should just lift right up. Okay? So start in the back. Take your time. Use a good spudger tool. So here's what we got inside. This is our lithium battery. They did a really good job on the cooling. It draws fresh air in from the back and it blows it out the sides. It's got the fourth generation Aeroblade cooling fans here. Each one of these fans has 59 individual blades and they're kind of chamfered a little bit on the ends to reduce, turb reduce turbulence inside so they get maximum airflow under our heat sinks here for our GPU and CPU. Um, here's our NVMe slot here with our 512 in it currently that we're gonna replace with our freshly cloned one terabyte. Over here, right over here, you can see there's a second NVMe slot right here to put another drive in, and here's the mounting screw. It rides over top of all this other stuff here, which is, it's a very tight fit, but it kinda, it'll push down on this, but you can add a second NVMe drive in this case, I'm going to leave that blank. You'll probably ask, well, why don't I just put this in over there? But the customer wants this. I think they're going to maybe try to use it in another computer. And later, they want to add a, another one terabyte just for extra storage. Um, so here's our two and a half inch bay that I'm going to mount my new crucial one terabyte SATA SSD in. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this caddy out of here real quick, guys. But before I get in here too much, I am going to disconnect the battery. You got to be really, really careful when you start messing with the RAM and the NVMe drives if you don't disconnect your battery. But I just want to get this caddy out of the way here. And again, using good quality screwdrivers and spudgers is really important on these so you're not messing, messing, messing up your screws and slipping off and poking stuff you don't want to poke. So here's that. But let's go over here. Oops, here's our battery connection right here. This connector is going to slide back out of the connector right there. So I'm going to do that just to be safe. It's a little hard to see here. My hand's getting away. So I make sure there. 
it's disconnected, okay? And we gotta remember to hook that back up when we're all done. But as one added precaution, I always like to open these carefully and I'm gonna hit the power button over here a few times to get rid of any residual juice that's floating around in the circuits there. So that should be good. All right, so we got our battery disconnected. I'm gonna go ahead and mount my, let's see, here's the, in the box, they give you the mounting screws and the SATA cable, like I said. We're gonna attach that to our drive real quick, just like that. And it's gonna connect right here on the motherboard to this little clip here. We gotta flip this lever up carefully. Come on, there. If you go too hard on them, you'll, that thing will fly right off there and you're pretty much done. You gotta be really careful. So this is gonna connect in there just just like that, all right? So we're gonna mount this in the caddy uh, with our mounting screws right here. That out of the way. <clears throat> so why you see how I do all this. I don't wanna edit any of this out because I want you to see everything. It's gonna be a nice little upgrade on this computer. Seems like it's screwing the hole. No, my hand's in the way, sorry. You can check out some of my other videos. I do a lot, I have a lot of videos on cloning and these similar type upgrades and a lot of different types of computers. This is my first Predator video. Done a few of these in the store recently, but I just haven't had time to do video, we've been very busy this time of year. <laughs> so, we have that mounted in there. We're gonna set it back in place here, hopefully. It's gonna be a really tight fit here, guys. I don't wanna to take out the battery if I don't have to. So before I do anything, I'm gonna hook this up to the motherboard. This only goes one way. But the most important thing is make sure you get it in there all the way. Come on. Ah. These are always very stubborn. Come on. Uh, I don't have it. Come on. One side goes in, but the other side don't. Let me get my little tool on there. You can, oh, you can see some, ah. Uh, what do you think, camera guys? That look good? Perfect. There, we want to get it up so that line is all the way in there and give it a little tug there. So now we got to squeak it in here next to our battery. I'm boogering up your cable so it's going to ride just like that. They had it kind of pre-bent from the factory right there. It's okay to bend those cables a little bit, but don't pinch them too hard. So now let me put my mounting screws. Now this is a blank drive. Once we get into Windows, I got to go into disk management real quick and allocate that space. And you can put partitions on it if you want, but typically don't don't need to do that. You can, but I'm not gonna. There's different types of SATA drives, SSDs you can get, of course, Samsung, but which I have both. The customer chose this one. It costs a little bit less, but these MX500 series drives are very good from Crucial. Use them all the time. They're quite fast for a SATA drive. And you could put a mechanical hard drive in here. If you got one laying around, you can put a one terabyte or two terabyte standard SATA hard drive in there. All right, so we got that mounted. We're gonna get rid of the NVMe here. And I wanna show you once I get the screw out right here that holds it in. Okay, on the, on the bottom pan here that I took off, come over here, you can see where both the M.2 slots are. They have little heat, nice heat shields mounted right on the bottom. So it's right on top of the SSD. These are quite thick, plenty of heat absorbing capability. So on our new drive, it really depends on the situation and the cooling. I kind of wish they would have had some vents right here for the M.2 drives, but they don't because these can get pretty darn hot during intense gaming. 
But they're designed to run hot. All NVMe drives are, especially the controller. It gets really hot. Now remember, we have our cloned data on here. The windows and everything is on that drive. So sometimes I put you know, heat pads on like this. In this case, I'm going to leave it the way it is and just use what they have here from the factory. It's got a heat pad right here that's going to sit right on top of the controller. You can see on both sides they have that. So I'm going to not use these. I don't want to put too much on there. Um, too much is not good. So we're going to give that back to the customer. And we're going to take out our two 8 gig sticks over here. You just kind of pinch out these little arms right here carefully. And it kind of pops up. Just like that. And we're going to put our HyperX in here. And stuff only goes in one way, guys, obviously. Got the little notch you have to line up there. Just try not to touch the pins on this and the SSD if you can help it. It's not the end of the world if you do, but just be careful. So now we have two 16s for 32 gigs of DDR4. Got a new NVMe in there, our 2.5 inch SATA drive, and we got an empty M.2 slot over here for future upgrades. Like I said, I offered, I told them I could put this one back in there, but they wanted to just wait. I think, like I said, I think they're going to try to use that in a different computer or laptop that they have. So, now, last thing, we're going to hook our battery back up, which is kind of tricky because there's not a lot of wiggle room in here. Get the cable up. Just be really careful with those little tiny wires, guys. Once you get it lined up, now I got to do a, a lot of moving around here. Uh, I got to spin it around, camera guy. Sorry. It's kind of tilted down. I got to get it tilted up here a little bit. There we go. <sighs> got to get my hand in there. And just kind of on the ends, grab it, tip of your fingernail, and push it in carefully. Make sure it's in all the way. What do you think, guys? Is it in there all the way? That looks good. All right, so I think we're ready to button it back up, but looks real nice in here. Like I said, they did a really good job on their cooling. These Helios models are kind of renowned for their cooling system they got in here with these arrow blades. So, draws the air in here from the back and blows it out on the sides. So let's go ahead and put our cover back on here. These are a little tricky sometimes to get. Oh, and the other thing is over here in this corner, be, be conscious of the LCD, you know, the screen cable for the screen is right here. It's got to kind of be tucked down in that little notch area right there. Just like that. And sometimes it wants to come out when you're taking this off and you try to put this back on, you're going to pinch that cable. So just be aware of that. Trial and error, guys. So, so let me see if I can go around and start snapping it back in. So as long as it snaps good in over here, you should be okay on that cable. And don't squeeze really hard on the top. Just remember, you got a screen back there. You don't want to squish it and break it from the outside. That wouldn't be good. So I always wait to put all the screws back in until I know I got a good clone and I don't have to open it back up for whatever reason. All right, so. So I'm going to go ahead and power it up here and see if we can get a, see if we got a good clone. Now it's going to take, on, on any RAM upgrade, usually it takes a minute for it to post for the first time because it's reading the new RAM. We might even get what they call a checksum error or something like that saying that the BIOS configuration has changed. That's totally normal. It's just because the BIOS is looking for 16 gigs of RAM, now it's got 32. So you have to be patient on these posts. <clears throat> these keyboards are really nice, they're very solid. Played around with them quite a bit. I like the way it feel. Good, good, smooth trackpad or touchpad here as well. So we just got to be patient on that post and waiting for the predator guy to pop up here. Come on. It will post. Just doing this in real time, guys. I just kind of want you to see. If not, you can turn, you can 
hold in the power button, turn it off, and just turn it back on, and it should be fine. We got a lot of new stuff in there now, so it's just like I said, taking a minute for it to figure it out. We got our Predator logo back there. No, it's not on it. It's got to get past the post screen for that little guy to light up. It will. All right. Let me. About the time I turn it off, it's going to post. All right, guys. <laughs> as soon as, as soon as we stop filming, about two seconds later, it posted. You just got to be patient. So I'm going to turn it back on. We got the new two and a half inch SSD, the new NVMe drive, and the new RAM. The BIOS just needed time to figure all that out. You can see, we got we definitely got a post down here. We should just start booting, which it did. So there we go. Sorry about that, but everything's good. I'm going to get into Windows here and make sure all of our stuff is there. And looks like we got a good clone, so that's good. Boom, came right up. All right, and there's our data migration software. So let's uh, first just go into Task Manager real quick. Just type in Task in the search box and hit Enter, and it comes right up. And here's under Performance, here's our memory showing 32 gigabytes. Two, two slots used, 2933 megahertz, so all of our RAM is being read just fine. Of course, here's our CPU, i7, 10750H. And then I'm going to go over to my start button here, and I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go into disk management. Check out our drive situation. There's our new 2.5 inch SATA drive coming up to be initialized. I'm going to hit OK. This bigger for you. It's right here on top. This is our empty 1 terabyte 2.5 inch drive. I'm just going to right click on it, choose simple volume. I'm going to basically hit all the defaults on this. Here's where you could partition it if you wanted to, but we're going to allocate all the space for just one terabyte. Hit next, drive letter D, next, NTFS. You can name the volume something if you want. Hit finish, quick format, boom, there it is. All right, so there's all of our drives. Let's go into File Explorer real quick. So here's our empty two and a half inch drive, one terabyte SATA. Here's our brand new Evo that we just put in. And again, you can right click on this and hit rename and call it whatever you want. Okay, so we got all of our drives showing up right. Plenty of RAM now. Um, so now we just made a really great laptop, even really greater. <laughs> if you like my video guys give me a like if you love it go ahead and give me a sub that would be great check out more of my videos on similar upgrades appreciate y'all watching have a great day